Hello, in the video coming up, we will look at setting up your Chrome OS computer for the very first time. So if you've just brought a new Chromebook or Chromebox or you power washed it and you've come to this screen, which you can see here, this is what you get when you set up your Chrome OS computer for the first time. So it has changed over the years compared to how it used to be. So I thought it'd be a good idea to do a video. So this is the video, this is what you get first of all. And this is, I've, got, I've done this just after doing a power wash of my Chromebox. And here you've got the shutdown. If you shut down, that's fine. And all what would happen is when you turn it back on, you get to this page again. So first of all, you can see it's got the language here. So you could choose here the language that you'd like. So I'm going to put that to United Kingdom and then the keyboard to UK as well. So you can choose your language from there, press OK. And then here you've also got accessibility options. So you can choose there and you can turn on different accessibility options. So Chromevox will give you a spoken feedback. Chromevox spoken Chromevox feedback, spoken is, feedback is, ready. is ready. So you can see that's on. Then what that should do when you choose things, it should then read out what you're choosing. So let's have a go. Large mouse, Large mouse cursor, cursor. Toggle, button. toggle button, not press. Not press. There you go. Press search plus, plus space, to space to toggle. Large mouse Large cursor, mouse cursor. Toggle, toggle button, press. Press. Press search press plus, search space, plus to space to toggle. Okay, so that's that. It's 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 a bit off-putting for me, but I'm sure if you need the XDM accessibility options, it, it's useful. So you've got that, and it will then speak obviously every time you need it. But we'll take up the speak speech one for now. So that's the speech one. But the large mouse cursor, that's pretty good if you want a large mouse cursor. You can do most of these once you've set it up, but you can also do it at, at the beginning as well. So you've got that there. You've got high contrast mode. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's pretty nice. So you could have it like that if you wanted to as well. I'll take that off for now. And then you've got screen magnifier as well. And that gives you the option to magnify like that. Obviously, you can have more than one on if you want as well. You just select the ones that you need. So you could have them like that. You've got select to speak. You could select that on as well. Dot magnifier. The dot magnifier is, personally, I think would be better if you needed to use it um, because then it gives you the screen at the bottom and it magnifies at the top where your cursor is. So you can see like that, so that's pretty good. And then you've got the on-screen keyboard as well. The on-screen keyboard, nothing's happened on this. I think that's because I'm using my Chromebox, but if you was using um, your Chromebook, you should get an on-screen keyboard. But saying that, let's have a quick look. Just show there, click there. Yeah, so you can still get it. So if you've got a Chromebox, it may just show up. If it doesn't, just turn that on like that and then click there like that. So you've got your on-screen keyboard as well. And when you've used it and you want to stop using it, you can go like that and it goes down. So that's pretty cool as well. So I am going to take all of them off, but it's good to see that they're all there. Okay, so that's from the very first screen. Instead of just doing get started, you can first choose your language here and your keyboard input and your accessibility options. So I'm gonna to go to get started. Now the next thing is that you need to connect to your Wi-Fi network. If you've not connected something to your Wi-Fi network for a while, you might think, oh, right, my password. And that's, that's the main one for me usually. But luckily, because I've just recently changed um, broadband provider, I hope I know it. Uh, and that's right. And then connect. And that's connected, that's fine. If it doesn't, then you, you've got to go and find your Wi-Fi password, else you won't be able to go any further. Then from there, you've got the Google Terms of Service. You, we should all read these things, but let's be honest, how many of us do? So if you scroll down, there's lots of different information and there's some hyperlinks as well. So if you do like to know, first of all, you can read all of this. And then here we've got Google Chrome and Chrome OS additional terms. So you could click on there and read that as well if you want to. 
and that will just come up with the additional terms. Close that and we've got system security settings. So we'll have a look at this system security setting. So your computer contains a secure module which is used to implement many critical security features in Chrome OS. Visit the Chrome Help Center to learn more and then it just gives you an actual web address. So that is okay. I think they could have done that better because essentially you can't visit a web address just now. So you could, you can't even copy it. So that's a bit pointless really, I think at the moment. You could write that down and then look at it afterwards. But yeah, that just seems a bit of a pointless setting at the moment there. So here we've got optional, so you can tick it if you don't want it. And this help improve Chrome OS features and performance by automatically sending diagnostic diagnostic, and usage data, data to Google. Sorry, I'm struggling to get my words out. And then you could obviously learn more. Now you don't need to have this on, it's entirely up to you. I usually leave these on because I want Chrome OS to improve over time. So I, I, I'm quite happy to have that on, but you can turn that off. And then accept and continue. And then it's this here. So who's using this Chromebox? You can always add more people after setup. Each person can personalize their account and keep data private. So we've got you, which is me, or you can set it up for a child as well if you like to. So we just go for me or you, and then next. And then it will ask you for your Google account. Now, if you don't have a Google account, it should give you the option to create one. More options, yes, create an account here. So if you don't already have a Google account, just go to this create account and it will take you through the process of creating a Google account. So I'm fine because I have a Google account, so I can just type in my Google account there, gmail.com, go to next. Just take a while to go from this page here. And then you just need to enter your password and go to next. So you can also show your passwords. So if you're not very good at remembering your passwords, because it would just show up like dots. But if you wanted to check after you've entered it that it's correct, you could do show password there. And then you could just start putting in your password if you wanted to. That's not my password, by the way. Okay, so you quickly enter your password. And then once you've entered your password, you get to this, this screen here. So sync your Chromebook, or it will be your Chromebook, obviously, if you're using a Chromebook. Your save preferences and activity will be ready on any Chrome OS device when you sign in with your Google account. You can choose what to sync. So here you've got sync your Chromebox app settings and more. So if we click on there, does it give you the option? No, so that's just saying what it will do. I thought it would give you the options and then sync your Chrome browser, bookmarks, passwords, history and more. And then Google may use your history to personalize search on other Google services. So you could do, this is just saying what it will do. So it is, you can't choose it from there. You could do review sync options following setup. So if you want to review them sync options, then do that following setup. Okay, and then press accept and continue. We will do that review, see if it comes up. Do accept and continue. So on this page, you've got um, Google Play because you can use Android apps now on your Chrome OS device. So that's just the terms for that. And you've got the Google Privacy Policy if you want to have a read. And there's a learn more here about sending usage and diagnostic data. And then here you've got another tick box and it's back up to Google Drive. Easily restore your data or switch device at any time. Your backup includes app data. Your backups are uploaded to Google and encrypted using your Google account password. So you can tick that off if you want. I personally leave that on because I, I want the backup to take place and then go to more. And then we've got, so this, as you can see, there's a lot more. If you've used Chrome OS devices before, there's a lot more now to set it up a Chrome, Chrome, Chromebook or Chromebox. Not necessarily a bad thing because you're just getting it all done so you don't have to go and, and do the settings afterwards. Okay, so from here, this is more about sending usage data. So backup Google Drives, we've always already done that. 
and then use location. So if you wanted to, if you're, if you're using your, your, even if you're not using it when you're out and about, using location at home is good for Google Maps if you wanna find somewhere to go. So if you wanted to do that, perhaps you would want it to use your location. If you don't want it to know your location, then you can take that off. You can always just type in your location for maps if you don't want to, but I'll leave that on, that's absolutely fine. And then here you have to tap accept to confirm selection of these Google services. So just click there and click accept. And then it loads up your Google Assistant. Let's just wait for this to come through. So with Google Assistant, Google Assistant works here too. So you can use your Google Assistant, it's just stating that you can now access Google Assistant from your Chromebook, which looks like you've already set up Google Assistant on another device. Get even more out of your Assistant by turning on-screen context on this device. So if I wanted to, I could set up Google Assistant so I can, I can talk and ask Google Assistant questions from my Chromebooks directly. But on this occasion, I am just gonna put no thanks. Access your assistant with Hey Google. I'm just gonna put no thanks. And the reason why I'm saying no thanks personally is, is I've got a lot of Google Homes around the house and it just, they all start chatting when I try to talk to this, so I don't, I don't tend to bother. So no thanks for that. And that's it, you are ready. You are ready to start using your Chromebox. Press get started. And there we go. Now here, the reason why it took us here is because we asked it to review our sync settings. So it did work, it did show us them afterwards. And then from here, you can choose what to sync. So if you wasn't sure what to sync and you wanted to check, make sure you tick that box like I did there. And then from here, just manage what you sync and sync everything, or you can customize sync, such as just your bookmarks or just your extensions or passwords. I, I tend to sync everything, so that's fine. I'll leave that as that. So that all come up. And then we've got Grammarly. This is nothing to do with the setup. This is just because I've used Grammarly before. So it's just come up on my account. I don't think it's anything to do with the setup. Not too sure, not too sure on that. I don't think it is. I think it's just because I've got it on my account. So that's it, so that's all done. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. And then here you've got welcome to your Chromebox. And there's lots of different things you can learn. So you can read all of these. It gives you lots of information just to help you. And if it is a brand, brand new computer that you brought, check out your perks because you've got Stardia Pro. You get get three months of Stardia Pro at no charge. So you can get that. You've got Adobe Express, Pixel Art Premium, YouTube Premium, three months, three months. Cloud Stop Motion, two months. I've not really used all of these. Two months trial and Sumo Suite there, three months. I previously in the past always used this Google One storage to so your Chromebook comes with 100 gigabyte of cloud storage. Enjoy plenty of space for all of your files, free of charge for 12 months. So that's the one I normally get. If I tried to get that now, I wouldn't get it because I've already used it from this Chromebox. Well, I think I have, I'll have to check. But yes, I'm sure that's the case. And that is it, once you've done all that, you can then use your Chromebook as normal. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos. And thanks for watching.